whatever you do, you better make sure you edit. Make sure you edit. Are they looking for me, Chris? Come on. I know they are. Oh, man. Yeah, here he comes. Public enemy number one. The, the idea is to make it in a delightful and provocative way simultaneously. To not be condescending, but to not be too highbrow. To be charming, but not overbearing. To be humorous, but not rude, to be uh, intellectual and witty and relaxed and casual. I don't know what's going to happen. I never know what's going to happen. But I know something really, something's going to get catalyzed. There's going to be synchronicity and something magical is going to happen. I don't know what it is. Everybody can relate to art, but it's so individual just in the way we relate to uh, science as scientists in a very individual way. Some of us are chemists, some of us are organic chemists, some of us are physicists, some of us are theoretical physicists, some are experimental physicists, some of us are biologists, some of us are microbiologists, some of us, it's individual. But art can tie it all together and make it cohesive and make us one world. And that, that is, I think, a very powerful part and meaning and reason for quark part. It's definitely something that's a positive force, a positive force of energy that in this case, I can't mathematically define. I went to an early meeting and people were talking about what their project was going to be and my jaw was on the floor. I mean, it was just, you know, people's, I people's ideas of how to organize information in a visual and actually 3D way so that it'll be engaging and a garden, who knew, you know? So it's, it's really a kind of a wonderful thing. I mean, it, um, I've heard the term pleasure garden and in fact, this is a garden of the pleasures that are, that are more intellectual, which I think is marvelous. But they're also visual pleasures, so, you know, rave on. The angle that Quark Park took in introducing people to new forms of science they may not have known about or, or ways of expressing scientific ideas in a visual or three-dimensional aspect was incredibly successful because we had sound, we had light, we had all sorts of different textures that were involved with the learning. So you're being bombarded by all this sensory information and then later you get some of the scientific message. I think that that was really part of the, the great fun. There was a, a huge amount of quality that was under the surface. So this was not meaningless public art. This was, everything had a, had a message inside of it, a generative kernel around which these stories are built. There are remarkably few places in a community like Princeton where the whole community can gather and can gather in a place that is not involving commerce. The other thing that I think is wonderful about Quark Park is that I think it helps to break down the perception that science is inaccessible. The fact that children in particular, but not exclusively children, can go into something like Quark Park and come out not just with an aesthetic pleasure, but an understanding that science is accessible and that the ideas are understandable, I think is a wonderful thing. Hopefully the shock waves of the concept will go out and it will rise again and be reinvented somewhere else. But the main thing is to get this thing documented because it's, it is an Andy Goldsworthy but the concept isn't.